Whenever you get the balls to start the show, proceed accordingly. Well, cats and kittens, you're listening to the Camp on Fire show with two parts of Rubik's Pube. I'm Reverend Ness, and to the right of me tonight is Chef Shafard, and via satellite over the interwebs is the iconic Fid Chuli, diva, rock star, sailor, seaman. Just, just a big, big bucket of semen. <laughs> I already announced myself. Good. I'm scheming for some semen. You already announced me too. I don't have. You're doing half my job over here. He's scheming semen tonight. My main job is just to introduce myself, and then the rest of it's just vomit that comes out of my mouth in the form of words. I feel like that's the most flattering form of vomit, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. Obviously, it's easy to easier to clean up. It's biodegradable. You know, yeah. doesn't words don't harm the environment. The environment opposed, harms the environment. As opposed to like if I were to vomit after drinking a bottle of vodka, which is terrible for the environment. Yeah, you think it's wait, not wait. bad. No, it's not bad at all. <laughs> I think all vomit, unless unless you just ate like a shitload of Tide Pods and then throw that up, I think you're safe. But I if you ate a bunch of morning. Tide Pods, you would definitely and then threw up into like a water source. That would be bad for the environment. Threw up this morning, huh, Fid? Yeah, um, I did it. I did it again. Uh, partied way too hard last night. Woke up super hungover, and I wouldn't have vomited if it wasn't for the fact that I had to take a shit as soon as I woke up, and I was just pouring water out like like when an elephant comes, just like pouring yuhu out of my asshole. And I kept farting, and it smelled so bad, and I couldn't stand up, and uh, then that made me puke. This the podcast smell. has gotten off to uh, it's, it's gotten off to an interesting start. It's right well, where it needs to be. You it? brought up vomit. That's I mean that happened to me today. It's I topical. brought up word vomit, not it's, actual vomit. It's well, topical it. content. It happened to me this morning. Like yeah, this hot is off true. The press. We're the first to break this story. What happened yesterday morning? Um, did, you vom- did you vomit then too? Almost, um, almost. The sweet yeah. sounds of, of gas. Do you throw up? Like I feel like Rob doesn't really get drunk or hungover or throw up. Uh, very few and far between. But you throw them back. Like you throw that thing back often. I don't know yeah. how you do it. You're just a big human. I guess. I'm a big human. Uh, I also have you know 20 years of experience drinking, and I also. Um, I don't tend to mix alcohol too much. But I pace myself, typically. It's all about pacing yourself. And eating something before you before you drink is really important, too. Not after. Not even you during. Know, before. You're not my real dad. Don't tell me what to do. I will put you in the corner, Fid Julie. I have been the practicing cor- the Fid Julie There's a corner. drinking. There are four corners in this podcast, and I will put you in all of them at once. Only four? Only four. Yeah, our podcast is a just a box. What's your safest way to drink then, Fid? What's your safety tips for drinking? Yes, please enlighten us. Make sure you puke all the poison out the next day. That's really important. Yeah, and then- you know, I have something to say. I have something to say. I didn't do that. I didn't abide by your rules. And I think in the back of my head about a week ago, I was really upset that you wouldn't piss into the mic on this show, on the Camp on Fire show. You did not piss in your microphone. So I had the balls to subpathically and superbly piss your bed. Yeah, and I was all out of Febreze. So, you know, problem A meets problem B kind of thing. I just kind of opened the windows and turned on the fans and just aired it out, you know? Now his bed smells like Yeti piss. So so I I guess... Did you combat that with pissing my bed? Because that seems to be what had happened also. <laughs> yeah. An eye for an eye, a piss for a piss. Okay? That's how I roll. I had to go to Walmart and get, like, the dog piss spray deodorizer. No, and, I like, did too, yep. And, blast the mattress and then flip it over. Yep. <sighs> Good times. Yeah. So I think it- that's how you <laughs> safely drink. It's just yeah. piss someone else's bed. It's called adulting. You know, when you're spraying uh, Febreze that's been engineered for dog shit, 
all over <laughs> the top and bottom of your mattress. That's called adulting. That is adulting. That's that's <laughs> how you do it. That's what mom taught me. She taught so, me that. She taught me how to burp. I mean, obviously, uh, I was hung over all day. And now I'm drinking again. And it made me realize there used to be a third state of existence. There's <laughs> there's drunk, there's hungover, and then there's this third thing that I remember being there, but I haven't been it in so long that I can't remember what it is. Like, what's that third thing? Like, you're not drunk, and you're not dead. hungover. Dead. But you're sleeping. Dead. Yeah, dead. Dead. Sleeping. Sleeping. Dead. No, there was another one though. Sleeping dead. There was another. There was another one. It was just like you were like awake and you were alive, but you weren't drunk and you weren't hungover. Okay. Um, half chub. Liver. What? Half chub. All right. We're gonna we're gonna open up our phone lines and uh, see if one of our um, loyal listeners can come up with the answer to what is that third state of being? Not drunk. Not hungover. But something else. Yep, and if you want to call in, that's uh, rubikspubepa at gmail.com. Yeah, Phone just, in and let us know what that third state of yeah, yeah, just, um, existence is. Just, just record yourself telling us what that third state is. Then put that in an email. Then set your computer on fire. And then mail that to us. At gmail. rubikspubepa. I'll put the fucking Gmail in your landline. I dare you. Put the Gmail in your landline. You won't. Uh, I bet you won't. I mean, that's bold. They won't do it. I mean, we'll see. I, I think I think there's somebody out there who's bold enough to do it. I think maybe. What do you think, Fid? I'm just, uh, I'm still loving the fact that we, that Ness and I pissed each other's beds and we both bought uh, cat, <laughs> cat piss deodorizer <laughs> for Breeze. That's like, honestly, the, the I, I don't know. I don't know a lot about romance. <laughs> that's that's when I knew she was the one. <laughs> Good. Adjust my microphone here. Is that racket? That's, a, that's microphone adjustment. That's a it's a technical term. That's industry stuff. Okay. Yeah. What, oh, you're like a musician in a band, right? Um. Sometimes I heard that I might be. Wait, Fid. Were you awake or asleep when you pissed? My bad. Uh, I was asleep, but you might have been awake when I pissed your bed. No, I was asleep, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Audience, <laughs> what you don't know is I actually pissed both their beds. I went over to Vanessa's home, peed in her bed, and then got a plane to fit Julie and then pissed in his bed. Got another plane back and went to work the next day. You know, I can picture, knowing Rob... He didn't just like stand over the bed and piss on it. He like stood back and arced it. Oh, absolutely. Which is why yeah. there's that weird trail of piss from like, you know, six feet away from your bed. He came in and spooned you and pissed right onto your butt and your taint. <laughs> My God. Do we have anything that's non piss or poop no. or fucking vomit related? Do we have any other? Is there any other the news? No notes are literally poo poo pee pee, poo poo pee pee, telepathic poo poo pee pee. Oh, well, if it's on the show notes, then this is what we're talking about. All right. You know, when you hold in a shit all day and then um, the Rob fairy flies in through your window and pisses in your ass, <laughs> what comes out is called subgenius sauerkraut. Oh my god. I quit. <laughs> I quit this podcast. I'm going to going to watch TV. Wait, are you still going to be in the band? Yeah, no, I'm still in the band. Nah, quit the band and keep doing the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's less work. Yeah. That we could just change the name of the show, Camp on Fire with Formerly Rubik's Cube, the artist formerly known as. I'll go solo. I'll go, go solo. solo? Right oh, <laughs> whatever. Your fucking whole career is gonna be over. You're gonna get on stage and be like, "I have no picks. Where's Rob when I need him?" Your mom's Rob when you need him. <laughs> Come on, Fid, speak into the show. All right, Fid, give Good us job. something. That's, that's Rob's slogan, I think. And I was thinking what? this show needs a slogan too. 
And I, Does and it? I, I might have come up with the perfect slogan. Um, <clears throat> Camp on fire. Nice dick. I mean, that's pretty good. You immediately, because um, what are you going to say? No, I don't have a nice dick. You have to be like, you are exactly right. And I will heed every word you say. Yeah, from here on it's out. like. It's like camp on fire. Does your mom know you're gay? Like you're kind of like trapping them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, you know it's positive. Nice dick. It's a nice positive affirmation for our audience. It's something that we can all rally behind. Having a yeah. nice dick. Democrats, Republicans, black, white. You know, yeah. We're united in our pursuit to have life, liberty, and a nice dick. Yeah, I mean, aliens, sewer chuds all walks of life can get behind hey nice dick that's my yeah. dick's nickname sewer chud <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm gonna come over here and get some sewer chud mm, baby crawl into my pipes with that sewer chud <laughs> oh. oh man i'm gonna have nightmares about that tonight it's been a while, so I missed you guys. I missed making Subgenius sauerkraut on this show with you guys. Yeah, no, we uh, we took the week off or the two weeks off. I don't know. Um, you know, and I still haven't done my video uh, for our, our food. Uh, we're going to make the most obnoxious, ridiculous Lego omelet and corned beef hash with Rubik's Pube honey hot sauce. We made it. We just didn't record it. Yeah, no, we ate that already, so I have to go back in time and re-record us doing that. It was really good, though. You guys would have really enjoyed seeing it. But next time. Next time. What kind of uh, crazy Rubik's Cube shows have a bunch of people missed out on recently? Uh, we did one here where we're recording at our HQ yeah. in the farm. This uh, beautiful, beautiful farm in the valley. And we had some friends come up. We had uh, this this band Jesus Camp from Massachusetts. And our buddy Super Dragon from here. And then our new friends, El Dingo. And we, uh, you know, you play with bands all the time. And, and certain ones just uh, take the spotlight and you become buddies. You become a... Uh, little music buddies and it's multi beneficial and they sound good and they're awesome to talk to and I think that we could do a lot of stuff together in the future. Yeah. And uh we want to start featuring some friends that are uh Uber worthy of being on this mediocre podcast. So I think our first uh break is gonna be this song Betty by our buddies El Dingo. Yeah, let's do that. How's that sound to you, Fid? Yeah, hit it slack radio wait which one of us hits it uh you hit it oh yeah, yeah hit okay it. all right i'm right. hitting it all right then it was a girl of a heavy demeanor and she couldn't even see her feet always hungering for a meal always need another thing to eat now she never thought that she found true love till she found her own birth kiss betty settled down with young john brown and they had himself a couple of
this is great radio. I'm just picking the key. Yeah, I think uh I think we're back. Are we? Everyone be quiet. We're back. Yeah, I'm uh legally required to tell you that you are on the Camp on Fire show, the Rubik's Cube podcast. On Slack Radio? Slack Radio. Slack Radio. Oh, they told us not to use their name. They don't like our show. They think we suck. <laughs> Did they say that? Yeah. Well, they adopted us, so yeah, too bad. I mean, they're airing it, so they have to. They said, keep our good name out of that semen schemer in the front of your face. Uh, I was like, damn. Speaking of front of your face, we now have a new cause. Uh, Rubik's Pube uh, has a new cause to promote. Um, now, instead of complicating the situation and making a separate GoFundMe, we've decided that we're just going to add this on to the existing, you know, Rubik's Pube personal jet GoFundMe account. Uh, we all are going to get new noses. All of Rubik's Pube is going to get a new oh, nose. Yeah, that's right. We're doing like a nose surgery phase. Yeah. Yeah, so we want to. We're gonna go right. To, I'm gonna go personally. Um, I think Michael Jackson's eighth nose surgery is the one I'm gonna go for, number eight. So I think he ended up with like 17 of them. I'm going for eight, right there in the middle. I'm doing a classic Pee Wee Herman, just like the piece of scotch tape. Oh, nice! They're gonna have the like scotch tape over. surgically, surgically fucking glued to my and face, all to your face. Yeah, and then I'll always have. My nose. It's still my nose, but it's scotch taped up forever. Yeah, no, I kind of just want like a hole in the middle of my face where my nose should be. No, I like that. It's like cut the middle, man, you know? Yeah. Just, just go right in. Yeah, yeah. Who needs nose? I'll just be nostrils. So, yeah, if you want to find the GoFundMe that we have going on for a tour van, uh, you could donate. And instead of a tour van, we're all going to get new noses instead. No, we're still getting the tour van. We're going to get new noses. Cause... Oh, right, because $400 gets a van and three noses. Well, clearly we need more money. We need our fans to give us more money. Make, I make think our your dream new your reality. be like a uh, Micro Machines version of the tour van. <laughs> and that's what all of your noses should be. That's not a bad idea. So um, we need the tour van first. No, we need the noses first. Okay, so then we need to find a tour van that matches the noses we get. No, no, we all get the nose. It's like the transformer, but we put the we put the three noses together, and, and then, then it makes the tour <laughs> van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that would be. Is that how you summon the van? You just you put all your noses together. You put all our noses together, and then the van yeah. like shoots out of the ground like a. Okay. Clearly, out of like you know. The, the triangle of noses. And then there's our tour van. People were like, where'd you park? Oh, hold on a second. Let me rip my <laughs> nose off my face. Hey, Dan, Dan, get over here. Pull your nose off. We got to get the car. <laughs> like, what? Rubik's Cube be... and the legend of the three noses. I think we'd save a lot of parking. Yeah, you know, this third nostril... Malarkey. I, I don't. I don't care for it. I'm going for the three noses. I say noses. six. Six nostrils are better than three. I would agree. It's nine. Yeah. It's nine. Nine. Nostrils. That's true. We all have three right. nostrils, and then we put all our nostrils together and make a tour van or tour jet. Yeah. Tour, tour Hindenburg. Yeah. I really, I really think we could do this if you give us enough money into the Gmail. You, we could take our noses off and throw them on the ground. And then the van comes out. Instead of smoke bomb, it's just tour van. <laughs> I like I like the idea of your your tour vehicle being a zeppelin. Oh, <laughs> uh, that, that was that was stop it every time we want to land. Like, that was crash land every time. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Panic Bedlam who said that we should have an airship. That was uh, so. I think they came up with a pretty good idea. <laughs> Yeah, Panic's like a classic time traveler. Like, they went fucking whatever direction in time to listen to this show. Yeah. Understand that we needed a Zeppelin and then just slid it into casual conversation the other exactly. day. Exactly. They already knew. Outstanding. Beautiful. Beautifully done. 
I think actually uh, Nazi Calamari was the first band back in the late 1930s to use the Zeppelin for their tour vehicle. Yeah, that's where Ze- that's where uh, Led Zeppelin got the idea for their their band name was. Because they were yeah, they were huge. You know, they were really inspired by Nazi Calamari because they were the Nazi Calamari was doing things in the 30s that nobody else was doing. Mm. You know, vibraphone quintet. And obviously Bruce Willis wasn't retarded back then, but he wasn't famous either. No, it's true. This was this was back when he was in his like 40s. He was just some guy. Yeah, but Nazi Calamari, they were the first people to invent a television and then throw it out a fucking hotel window. <laughs> the very, the, as soon as they had the prototype finished, they threw it out the Third. window. Well, back in the day, you just order one from Sears and, uh, you know, it came in like a, a box and then you just put it together, right? You just put your own, t- build your own TV. No, like, you order it from Ikea and they send you three noses and you just have to figure <laughs> it out. That's true. I, I, we did forget to mention that IKEA is going to be supplying these noses, uh, which is great because you know I love uh, meatballs. Do you like meatballs? Anybody else like meatballs? Uh, no, I get freaked out in IKEA. I feel like I'm in like a uh, <clears throat> like a back rooms video. I can see. Oh, that. yeah, you can cast. I like meatballs, but yeah, that's not like. Meatballs are a comfort food, and I think that's why they try to put it in Ikea to, like, not make you as scared. But really, it's just more scary because meatballs are out of their element when you place them in Ikea. The reason Ikea has meatballs is because, for some reason, their sales strategy highly involves making you think you're in Switzerland for 45 minutes. Is that it? I I guess that's it. Which I don't know why I don't know who came up with that idea. Like guys, I got it. But like when what? I think of meatballs, I don't think of Swedish meatballs. That's the problem. That's why it's even more off-putting. No, you gotta fuck with some Swedish meatballs. I I do. I eat them. Like I have eaten a Swedish meatball. Before. Have you fucked a Swedish meatball? Maybe. <laughs> the Swedish meatball. I I don't know. I can't disclose my ethnicity, but I'm Italian, and. I have gone against my roots and have sat on a Swedish meatball. Wow. Scandalous. And I think I can confess that here because I feel safe. Yeah, nobody's going to listen to this. But I would never say that at Ikea, and that's the problem. Like, if I'm buying furniture, I also want to commit, like, confessions of of my deepest, darkest uh, food fetishes. Meatball I want to feel safe. I want to feel safe. And I just don't feel safe at Ikea. And then I see the meatballs. I get flashbacks. I don't like it. I just keep me away from that. All right. Okay. And also, you know, when it's a special occasion and you want to make a really good subgenius sa- sauerkraut, you uh, sit on a Swedish meatball first. It gives a little extra zing. Oh, chef's kiss. <laughs> Chef approved. Mwah. Is that is that this show's? I can't even say this week because we can't even commit to that. But is this this show's recipe? I think sitting so. on a Swedish meatball. I'm gonna make a Swedish meatball, and you're gonna. I'm gonna make a whole plate of it, and then you're going to sit on it. I'm gonna start saying that when I have to poop. Like, hey, I'm gonna go make Swedish meatballs. Everyone's gonna no, eat me. It's more than a recipe. Especially it's the life advice. Look, hi. I'm Fid Chuli of the Camp on Fire podcast. <laughs> you may know me from all the attempted jokes that I make on this show, but there's something that's not a joke. Your mortality. Yes, life is short. <laughs> so take your pants off and sit your bare ass on a Swedish meatball today. Because you know what? You can't do it. When you're dead. That was beautiful, Fid. Da, 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 da. Uh, I'm going to have that put in my tombstone. What? I think my tombstone that is that whole say, speech, uh, the whole speech is going on the tombstone. <laughs> so either I have a very large tombstone or it's very small print. What do you think, listeners? You heard it here. Give us money so you can get all that on 
Shafard's tombstone. Yeah, you know, which should be arriving next week. I accidentally found out that you can convert almost any like bumper sticker saying or t-shirt saying into a funny epitaph on your tombstone. Yeah. Right. Do you have an example? Well, I mean, just, you just go with the classics, right? So like I'm with stupid and the arrow could be pointing at the guy next to you or it could be pointing (laughs) up at God, you know? Or like, yeah, let's say, you know, you're married and you get two plots right next to each other. And then the first person who died is like, my dearest beloved. And the other one's like, I'm with stupid. I'm with stupid. In heaven. In I'm heaven. stupid in heaven. Yeah, yeah I mean, because I'm definitely going to heaven. You could have a... Uh... Welcome to the graveyard. If you were dead, you'd be home by now. <laughs> welcome welcome to the jungle. You know where you are? You're gonna die. I was also considering for my own epitaph, uh my daughter is a dead honor student at St. Helena National Cemetery. <laughs> Uh, honk if you're horny. That could work. <laughs> honk if you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Military son. Uh, you're gonna die over here from laughter. Demon for semen. Still. Always. Gas, grass, or ass. Nobody dies for free. <laughs> <laughs> see what i'm saying like next time you're at like a t-shirt store or you're driving down the road and you see some idiot with a uh with a stupid slogan on a bumper sticker just play the fid Shuli epitaph game and like find the funniest version of that thing and then your life will be a little bit better just a little bit better my dead yorkie <laughs> I fucking hate that when it's like, I love my Shih Tzu. <laughs> Whatever, when people got those stupid dog stickers. You know, they and they don't only have one. It's always 17 of them on the back of their car. They are obsessed. Like, the, every time they go into some kind of general store off the beaten path, <laughs> but fuck it, Kentucky, they have to buy one of these little fucking bumper stickers or magnets for their car and well, you know dedicated dog people. to their dog. Yeah. You know dog people, they're like, well, I got this sticker for for pizza, my Yorkie, but now Bono, my Husky, feels bad, so I have to get the sticker for Bono, too. And then they end up having, you know, 14 dog stickers. It's like the, the stupid stupid bumper sticker where on the windshield where it's got the family and they're all stick figures you know what I'm yeah, talking yeah. about yeah, I, and then I, there's like six little kids stick figures yeah I got a little it's distracted like thinking about just the miracle that is the fact that Bono from U2 is a husky and uh, well, you know, and he's a stupid and he's, person and, move his and, name and, in the husky Bono no 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 Bono from U2 is actually a husky dog um, it's a little known secret um, and somehow this 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 husky dog has managed to make some of the worst music that's ever been recorded in all of history. He gone by pedal. It's it's amazing, really. He needs to be fixed. He should. And be. you know what? Apparently, he has like eight hundred fucking kids. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, he's got a shitload of kids. He's been married to the same woman for like eighty-five years, and they have a shitload of kids because they're Catholic, you know. They to be believe. fair, it was only three litters. <laughs> It's true. So and it's you know like another crazy. thing about those people with the I love my golden retriever bumper sticker. Um, what? What? Tell us. The, these these are the same bitches, because let's be honest, bitches, right? Come on. Yeah. That they talk to their dogs in full, elaborate sentences with dependent clauses and multiple coordinating conjunctions. And they really think that the dog knows exactly what they're saying. You know that they do. Because if I you mean, say, if you're you not say wrong. something like 
if you tell the dog you're gonna kill it in the middle of the night, but you say it like this, like you're really happy, then they'll get mad. They'll be like, "Don't say that to him." Yeah, that's true. They do do. Yeah, that. but they don't know what you're saying, and the fact that you love your dog, that you're advertising the fact that you love your dog, is not much of. You're not really saying anything. Doesn't everybody love their dog? Like I, I kind I of hope so. I don't think <laughs> everybody does actually. Dog love dog. And I'd kick it. Oh my God, that's you're a monster! Do, but that's why I don't have a dog, so it's no one's Fair. getting hurt. Fair. And you know what? I everyone knows I'm a cat supremacist. All right, this everyone's been thinking about it. They're like, "Oh, she might be a cat supremacist." Yeah. All right. How about this? A dog gives birth to little dogs. It's called a litter. You know what a cat shits in? Litter. Oh. How about that? Yeah. Damn! Yeah. Cats yeah. one, dog Even zero. The cat just meowed from the other room, so right, Ruby? Cat, cat agrees. Yeah, she did meow in agreement. I just I had to say that because you know I got I yeah got because cat. you love kicking dogs. Yeah, That's but I don't do. own one. I don't own one, so. Oh, you love kicking other people's dogs? Like that's better. Yeah. It's a little better. My cat is molesting my microphone. Well, then instead of uh. Instead of a bumper sticker that says, I love my border retriever, you need one that says, I love kicking dogs. It says, I, I need to drive next to people with those, I love my retriever stickers. And it says, like, I kicked this person's retriever. <laughs> and, I'm, I'm and I just got to drive next to him the whole time to make it make sense. And then it'll become a really popular bumper sticker. And then people will start making epitaphs in 85 years that say, uh, I heart kicking the bucket. <laughs> and it's going to be based off of your I heart kicking dogs sticker. Fair. Uh, I don't think we're going to have few, uh, like, uh, cemeteries in the, in the far future. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have enough land for, for cemeteries. I think we're just gonna, there's gonna be so many people in a hundred years on this planet or nobody, one or the other. I think that's why they started doing the big wall of dead people though. You know, like they started going up and not just stack them. You know, I think that we could just stack them. Shoot everybody into space. Get fucking Elon Musk. That cost a lot of money. All right. Elon Musk just lost like $14 billion this week or last week or whatever it was. So he can't afford it anymore. Yeah, think about how many people, how many dead people could have been shot into the sun if he didn't lose that money. Yeah, no, he's a selfish, he's a selfish prick. Yeah, I, it, it, into the sun, you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's how I'm going. I'm going I'd right like, into the sun. I, I'd like to go to Saturn. Send me over to Saturn. I'm going to get launched off a roller coaster and just land like a quarter mile out <laughs> into like a lake. If I was ever going to take my own life... I would jump out of a plane without a parachute over whatever stadium the Super Bowl is happening and right in the right oh. right during like, you know, halftime. You right, gotta do it like record breaking, right like you when, catch on fire. Right when Bruce Springsteen, Jay Z, Bruce Willis Nazi Calamari and, and Dolly Parton yeah. come out to Nazi Calamari's doing the halftime to, show by to, then to sing "We Are America." I will just plop right down the stage and just liquefy. And then we could say we played the Super Bowl. <laughs> we could. <laughs> they got. Uh, they did get played. Uh, all right. By well, it. then I'll I'll jump with my bass guitar. Yeah. So yeah. I'm prepared to plug it in when I land. No, man. They've got they've got radar. They would see your body coming. The they shrapnel would shoot you to shreds. Yeah, they would know. just open up the. I was thinking, you know, maybe the like the shrapnel from like the bass guitar would like pierce one of Dolly Parton's titties, and then she, it would just deflate on live television. I think that's why we got to get a blimp, though. It's more inconspicuous if you jump out of the band that's blimp. True, that's into true. Into the stadium, we could just like tape over like our, the band name and just put like Goodyear. Put we'll put a uh, Shamu, <laughs> just a big Shamu D. <laughs> I heart my orca. <laughs> oh, that one now. <laughs> we need new bumper stickers. Yeah, no <laughs> band information. It just says I heart my orca, and everyone's like, "Oh, you listen to Rubik's Pew? <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Shamu. Oh man, too soon. 
All right. So I think this is a good time for our, our second song break. <laughs> Fucking great segue. We've got, uh, we've got a recording that we did with the cart music session down in Philadelphia. And it's uh, it's uh, four songs from Rubik's Pube. And uh, I think you're going to like it. The first one is called In This Order. Uh, I Love My Yorkie. I Love My Yorkie. Shamu, I Heart Shamu. Shamu didn't do nothing wrong. It was just a sticker that blew over his blowhole from our private jet slash Zeppelin. That's the whole title. And then the third one is called I'm With Stupid. And the fourth one is called Swedish Meatball Squash. Those are good band names. Or song, song names. I'll just cut that out. <laughs> just, just edit that out. Those are great song names. I, I love those. Here they are. You're going to hate them in a second. Slack Radio. Camp, Camp on, on Fire. fire.
Fid left. <laughs> like, I'm out. That was the worst segue ever. We killed Fid with our bad segue. Fid, where are you? Fid, I love you. Now he's just ignoring us. My cat is humping everything in sight. Yeah, she's really out of control. All right. <clears throat> Where'd you go? Well, I didn't go pee. Because that would be rude to not pee on the show. Yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, that'd be that'd be terrible. I'm like uh, virtually stepping on you with a stiletto right now. <laughs> right on your See, pole. I'm, I'm trying. I'm drinking beer. I think I was just so hungover. And I'm just so dehydrated. The beer is just like soaking into me. It's not even getting to my bladder. <laughs> You're just getting bigger as a human. Wide. You're just getting wider from beer. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like Felch Armstrong. <laughs> That's a great show title. That's pretty good. Well, that could be your um, the Rubik's Pube rock rock opera about a superhero named Felch Armstrong. That's not bad. I mean, we could we could do that. I don't know if yeah. like. You could- Imagining Vanessa say, Phil Armstrong was a pinball wizard. <laughs> pinball lizard. <laughs> pinball, pinball lizard. Armstrong. I could say it. Wait, Yo, it Phil Armstrong. I could say it. Was a pinball lizard. That's how he won all those pinball games. He had a trained lizard that he would slip in through the coin slot and would push the ball yeah, into all the holes. Lizard. Yeah, yeah. They just messed up with the the, the spelling. They put a, a, a W where an L belonged. He's a pinball lizard. He goes right. into the coin slot. Now you See, have to write the songs. parody of the whole Tommy album. <laughs> the entire fucking album. Everything's the same except for pinball lizard. <laughs> <laughs> you have to listen to all of it just to get that one reference. Can we just change all the music, though, and just sing the lyrics to Tommy over it? The music's completely different. I don't care. Do whatever you want. Do it. My band. I'll do what I want. It's not. Hey, it's you're not a grown life. ass man. It's true. You're right. You could do all the acapella covers you want. All right. All right. I'm gonna get to work on the in the studio right now. Actually, I'm a grown ass man too. When I pee my bed, I go to the store and buy cat piss neutralizer and lift my mattress up and spray it all around myself. <laughs> I do that myself because I'm a grown ass man. Grown ass uh, man. So I was thinking, should we like do, start doing like guests on our show? Like have a a fourth person that yeah. we can ask questions of. I thought we were all guests on. And we show. are. We are. Do we want a fourth person? Yeah, <laughs> rotating guests would be is always a good idea. I guess I should say I should advise you that we're back on the show. By the uh, way. Uh, I mean, I figured that we just never, we're never off the show. Yeah, we're just going to open up vulnerably and talk about the ideas for the show. And maybe you could get excited too, ambiguous listener. We're going to have secret fourth guests. Secret eventually. fourth that's guests. That's rule. Absolutely. We voted upon it and now it's going to happen. If you want to be a guest on Camp on Fire, we'd be happy to have you. To have you. And uh, where, where do they email uh, Rubik's Pew PA at gmail.com you can message us and say hey I'm interested on in being on your podcast and then I'll probably ignore it and put it on who I was going to put on anyway so do yeah, that so just send us uh, send us an email at orcawasframed at gmail.com and send your money in it too You got there's a monetary fee anybody ever see that 70s that. 80s film Orca it was like supposed to be like Jaws but it was an Orca yes yeah he was framed by Jaws. By Jaws, absolutely. Jaws is uh, a vengeful motherfucker. He doesn't yeah, like you know, his, he doesn't like to have his territory stomped upon. He's the only one who's supposed to be eat, eating beachgoers. Then he heard Orca was in town trying to do that shit, so he framed him, turned him in. FBI informant Jaws. Yeah, we just we think of Jaws as just this huge, you know beast but uh he's actually really calculated and uh and shrewd you know the landlubbers they know him as jaws 
But the creatures of the sea know him as Brains. <laughs> brains. Oh no, it's Brains. I have a, yeah. I have a really unrelated question, and I, I asked it at work, and and I shouldn't have said it at work because I don't let my personality come out at my con job. But I asked this question, everyone's like, nah, 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 nah. they're mocking me and making me sound like a real like white girl. But like, I asked if a zombie can run forever because it's dead. Like, can zombies like run forever? You know? And and I felt like they they made me feel like real stupid for asking it. And I know I'm stupid for asking it. But I, I just like I wanted to ask you, fellow intellectuals, like you y'all think a zombie can run forever? They were like, like, can a zombie run forever? I'm like, yeah, I, well, can it? I think they made fun of you because they didn't know the answer to that yeah. question. Oh. They didn't know. So they're just like, what do you do in that situation? You, you, you either look stupid because you don't have the answer to such a uh, intellectual and thought-provoking question. Or you make me look stupid. Or they make you look stupid. And it didn't work because I already know I'm stupid. Well, yeah, I mean, they don't call you brains in the deep, dark sea. But, uh... Do they? You'd have to be stupid to know I'm not, to not know, uh, uh, I'm not smart enough to finish that joke. We broke fit. So, can zombies run forever? So, they're dead. Um, I'm not really sure the physiology of zombies, and they tend to uh, change from one particular, you know video game or movie or book or whatever from, from one to the other it's always a different physiology some of them are fast some of them are slow but the, the they all are like living dead so does the same mechanics of like muscles and energy uh does that all come into play now they're usually going for brains right they're like, give me some brains. Our brain's high in nutrients, and therefore it powers these dead muscles so they can run forever. I don't see one ever getting tired and just like being like, I need to take five. Just like stop oh, and awesome. smoke a cigarette. Exactly. That'd be zombie me. <laughs> I mean, I don't ever see them fucking stop. So I you, think that you, guys that you might be on I'll, to I'll something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got this. You guys eat it better. You guys kill the person. I like it better when you kill them. It tastes better when you kill them. Yeah, I, I got a, uh, I got a cramp. I, uh, I had some Gatorade right before the huge zombie run. And uh, no, here's here's the answer. The question is, can zombies run forever? And the answer is no, because Bruce Willis will eventually find and kill all of them thank you beautifully put i have closure now yeah. so we could continue on with the uh other conversation that was before but he better do it quick because uh <laughs> bruce is losing his faculties all right he needs to pick up the pace on the zombie killing <laughs> yeah he does <laughs> yeah yeah before he turns into one himself <laughs> yeah i mean that, that happens to us all that's why we don't need cemeteries in the future, because we're all going to be zombies. Yeah. And they're going to make us go to fucking work anyway. I, I feed my pet zombie Newports. <laughs> I don't want to know there aren't going to be cemeteries in the future. That's going to ruin my funny epitaph business. No, I mean, you just slap the bumper sticker on the fucking zombie. Ooh. Yeah, I could, like, sponsor zombies. <laughs> <laughs> like NASCAR. NASCAR. Yeah. Exactly. NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, all the cars are just automatically crashed before it even starts. Yeah, that's NESCAR. Yeah. So, what do we got coming up in the month of May? Because April is almost over, and by the time this airs, it will actually be May, right? Yeah, it'll be May. So, what kind of shows we got in May? I don't know. You had the list, and then you put it in your pocket. Because you fucking, you just ambiguously pointed and, and, and waved. And uh, here you go. Take a look at this. <laughs> Clear your throat. Get out all the fucking semen. Never. All right. 512. John and Peters in New Hope. That's the ween bar. Uh, the ween 
the band Ween. They're, they've been at that bar forever. So we're playing there, and that's cool. They live under the stairs. Yeah, they're buried in the floorboards. 513 National Sokols. That's a cool spot. It's in Bethlehem. That's in our hometown. They got free bowling if you're a member. They got cheap drinks, which is very dangerous. 518 is our HQ show with the bands Big Gorgeous and The Cult of Nasty. And they're on tour and they're coming through and it's going to be insane. <laughs> and Mr. Unloved, who's our buddy and he does a great solo performance. He's, he's great. He's a lounge singer from hell. 519 is PJ's in Phoenixville. I don't know anything about that one. 520 is Bloomsburg Park. And I know that a 14-year-old booked the show. Yeah, the uh, the PJs in Phoenixville is also with Big Gorgeous and Cult of Nasty. Oh, it is. That is. We're doing a doubleheader. And the then another, and another act that I'm not familiar with and can't remember. Yeah, so uh, that's it. John and Peter, Sokol's, Pube HQ, PJs, Bloomsburg Park. And that's uh, the Bloomsburg one is like a little festival. I think we got some buddies playing that with us. And then, oh, there's two more here. 526, we're doing a uh, Pride event. It's a drag show at Lafayette Bar. So we're going to... I'll dress up in drag and throw hot dogs and plan gay from outer space. Yeah, plan gay from outer space is the name of that event. And 527 is the North Penn Social Club. And we're playing with a Primus cover band called Percolator. So And uh, two other I, bands. So that should be a I, I don't know the other ones. I was I don't I'm excited for the Primus. Event. I'm like Bruce Willis. I'm starting to lose my faculties slowly. No, they all bleed into each other. But, you know, we got some stuff coming up. May's exciting. We actually we're playing at some of our favorite watering holes. We're going to do some new songs. We're going to do some new bits. So if you're in Canada, get on a plane. Come to Pennsylvania slash... Are we in Jersey? No, it's pretty much all Pennsylvania. No Hope's like almost Jersey. Yeah, No, no Hope's close to Jersey. <laughs> and come see us. All right? If you're in Bangladesh... Get on a fucking cow and, and get in the ocean and come see us in the Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, and surrounding areas. Or give us money and we can get a blimp and pick your ass up. Absolutely. If we had a private blimp, we could pick you up and bring you to our shows. Think about that. All you need to do is give us $40,000. That's how much a blimp costs. <sighs> I have to pee. Can I send it to you, Fid? Please do, because I was really hoping I'd have to pee by now. And, I'm really, uh, I'm trying to send it to you. I was just... All right, hold on. Um... All right, it's trickling in. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to have a full tank before the show ends. I you gotta, you gotta talk about something, and then if you don't think about it, maybe you'll just eventually pee. Uh, can we get a a sound bite of uh, of water dripping? Oh yeah, just water waterfall running. All sound bed. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's, that I'm gonna make help. that the music bed for this episode. Perfect, and that that'll that'll hopefully get you <clears throat> to pee by the end of it. Yeah. Then once I edit it together and listen to it, it's gonna make me pee, and I'll just. You know, splice that in right about here. Beautiful. Sometimes I can't pee during the show because I have like this raging heart on. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's sometimes why I can't pee. But then once it goes away, I'm like, yo, I really got to pee. You know, what? Yeah. that's a myth. I remember I uh, <clears throat> being in like uh, middle school in like sex ed. And they said that when you have a boner you can't pee because there's some valve or something that cuts off the flow so it doesn't kill the sperm and i remember like <laughs> lunch that day me and my friends were looking at each other like you pee with a boner right like you pee with a boner like that was some bullshit right you so i don't know where this you can't pee with a boner uh fake news misinformation came from and i don't know who's lobbying it and i don't know where the money's coming from but there's something there's somebody up to something do you just like plank on the toilet or do you just pee straight into the wall oh well i guess urinals exist yeah no you could just like aim it you know just uh push it yeah down. you basically yeah. like you you put your the your heels on the wall behind you and you put your the palms of your hands on the wall above the toilet and then you just kind of like 
crank it down so you're basically hitting like the top of the inside of the bowl right where i have that like i have a square just like on a uh, basketball backboard oh nice oh, I have yeah, a little yeah. square there just so when i'm pissing with a boner like i can make sure it's going to go into the bowl like i've tested the splash profile you know yeah yeah i normally just lay down in front of the toilet and then just push my boner slightly to the left so that an overarching kind of sprinkler water fountain effect happens and it goes perfectly Probably right like in the you middle lay on your back on the floor yeah absolutely and just try to arc it arc that shit yeah you really are the tooth fairy i am i want to start making urinals but the urinal looks like the board of a skee ball game <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I, had, I, I, I thought I had a joke. It's gone. I'm sorry. I did the sperm donor thing. You did. You did. But that would be that would make sex fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if like we if you could just wear like a portable ski ball. Just paint board me. On. Just paint me like a ski ball board. <laughs> just paint me like a ski ball board. I'll just fucking lay there. I don't care. I'd do your thing and see what's up. But you know. All right. Look for that in the pube tube. Yeah. You just wrote a verse. Paint me like a ski ball board. Paint me like a ski ball board. I don't care. And then all the other stuff you said. That was so you you gotta get cracking on that song. Rubik's right. Cube, paint me like a ski ball board. I'm I'm officially tasking you with yeah. writing that song on the podcast. So now you have to, because everybody's gonna right. hear that you've been charged with uh creating that musical masterpiece. I will. It's in record time. <laughs> Paint and if like, uh, uh, if you need any help making the video, let me know. It's out of my zipper. <laughs> we're, make, we're making this happen right now. All right. All right. Well, you want to throw out Dem Lanks? Where do they get the music, the YouTube, the the email, the everything? Where is all the Rubik's Pube stuff? Can you hear my guitar? No. You can't? Send your money to the Gmail. We also have a band camp. We got Spotify and Apple Music, but we also have a band camp. And you can burn your money and send it to our Gmail. And you could go on our YouTube and watch me get painted like a ski ball board. Don't be shooting no blanks now. And we also have a band camp. And that's Rubik's Pube PA for Instagram and stuff. And also the YouTube. And we also have a band camp. That was amazing. Did that come through okay? I think that, that, I think that probably worked. It was just fucked up enough. Awesome. Beautiful. Perfect. All right. Thank well, you. we're going out with... Uh, Another non Rubik's Pube band. Who is this? Yes, this is Panic's Practice. This is our artiste, uh, Reverend Evelyn Panic Bedlam. And they do all the art for us. They do like 99.9% .9 of the visual media that you see. And it's beautiful artwork. And they also do this esoteric. Shiganery. And uh, they're gonna they're gonna tell you some words on a bunch of things you don't know you need to hear, but you're gonna hear them anyway. So we'll go out on panics practice. A nasery of shenanigans on Slack Radio. Slack Radio. This is the Camp on Fire show. Camp on Fire. You've made it through another one, friends. Are you It's me again, Reverend Panic at Land Badlam, transmitting a message from the past on an only somewhat faulty time pot, like a bargain bin William Hartnell and three doctors. Hopefully you are receiving this techno-psychic time capsule in what should be the most probable future. Unless I hit rewind instead. Ah, oh, am I recording? Well, the point is, I'm here in 2033. Oh. 2023 at the anti-Valentine's Day celebration. Or as I call it, the Feast of Dracula's Daughter. Here at good old Pube HQ. 
Praise Rubik's Cube! Although the music you hear underneath me is an early recording of them live at Fightcoms. Anyway, let's get the brain mutation started. It's important to know that subgenii are occasionally known to gather in structures called clenches. Such cause time control distortion. And eventually most Yeti will unclench. Like a Wiccan Circle or Satanist Grotto, most are fleeting since they're similar in intensity to a Devival. For any gathering of three or more subgeniuses is a Devival, and from that, weirdness must flow. Of course, the individual Yeti often crafts solitary denominations. Others skews them off entirely. It is likely due to our wrong-mindedness. But subgeniuses like making mistakes. Discordian popes are infallible. How could they not be? But it is Eris who is the decay in the system. You have to have faults where you can exploit yourself. Milking profits from your mistakes. The Law of Five asserts that in all things there are conflict, the hodgepodge. And we can see entropy's potential build as we move toward the greater legitimacy of order. As chaos becomes confusion, then discord, then bureaucracy, and finally downfall in is that moment of collapse you need to be ready for, for your own slack liquidation sale. What the as Bob says. But I'm really here today to talk about esotericism. Esotericism. Is to take the convention of understanding and encrypt it hyperbolically in heavily symbolic language. Esotericism is to artistic intention what cipher is to espionage. But Bob is no super spy mastermind. Bob stumbles into meaning like a jogger in a dog park. Esoteric messages are written in the slack of nature itself. You can read the miracle of slack out of life directly. This is the teaching of Bodhada. The edict of Bob by which if it, it is, is slack, slack, it is safe. Yes, the short duration personal savior is a theological principle, elevating that found art of mystical desire and union to the point of sexer. It's a form of Boldada. It is the Boldada Yoga to the Jehovah One Godhead. But Boldada, unwed from rituals um, and prescriptures of the church, is just the free pill that Bob offers for that spiritual gut blowout. It is the Bolarian Zen market of Dobbs town itself. For our less rewardian artsy fartsy types of Yeti who want to make things for Slack rather than enjoying things for Slack, we first have to connect to our own source of Bulldog. No. We can say we don't know what the real date is, not knowing that it's really 1998 until the world ends. I mean, I've heard other Yeti say the con switched it on us. I mean, it is hard to deny that this is Mars. <laughs> Can we deny that this is 2023? Or whatever date this time pod lands into? Of course, pull the wool over your own eyes. But should we? I've heard several arguments since the pink calendar 1998 came and went. For building our own saucers, or creating our own sex goddesses, becoming our own sex goddesses. Hail Connie. And I say, let's, let's do the apocalypse ourselves. But what does that even mean? In old times, an apocalypse was a personal vision. Not a literal end times, but a vision. Sometimes a drug trip of self-realization. Sometimes something non-drug and more mystical. I mean, that's great. But I'll call the Crowley Book of the Law about wine and strange drugs any time. We don't have to live in our minds. We live on the Earth. Simple answer. Imminentize the eschaton. Bring the end of the world closer. Armageddon or bust. End the world or kill me. How can we do otherwise? Anything but pleasure saucers is not enough. Of 
course, these internal jaunts, these dreaming hallucinotropic phantasmagoria. These They are true visions. Uh, illusionary apocalypses, maybe, but to me, they are just psychic at stay drills, yetis sharpening their claws in other realms. But the true yeti often feels the need to howl. Excuse me. A yell of primal slack. There is a type of poetry that ends the world based on these revelations. I've heard some of this from my fine subgenius brother, the good Reverend Batty, and his band Dandelion Pipe Bomb. That anarchist circus, led by the subgenius Patty Smith of Providence and purveyor of Pick Rabbit Studios, will tell you that it's not a real poem unless it makes you bleed. Or at least something like that, I get so nervous around him. He's just so dreamy. It's hard to remember. <laughs> but what do I know of mad gods and poetry? Still questioning, I can ask Dr. Hal. He'll be at X Day. The real X Day. How could. How, how can you pull slack out of a turn of phrase or a phrase of music? Artist Jackie and the Wizard are much more direct, telling you that it's good. And showing you that music is the hyper bliss of pure slack. Rumble Dog. But I don't need Rumble Still Skins to explain to me the difference between Hot Rod Cobra and Cheeseburger on Wheels. I see wacky racers. It, it's hard to miss, you have to be a pink to miss. <laughs> brings me to my pod hosts, Rubik's Cube, my fellow seekers of slack and esoteric truth, a raw jank of it of Bull Dada, while they attend to their feline overlords, short duration saviors all, following the ways of Ulthar like punk rock blowfelts. Like the bad guy who pets the cat and James Bond butts and blows all. Anyhow, I've contributed to their propaganda campaigns, distilling their lyrics and sound noises into images to use in their merch, and to some success. And if my chronological periscope readings are correct, I've done two album covers of theirs at the time of this recording. Although Songs for Time Travel has many esoteric truths in, in, in its own right, I would direct you to look at the cover of Cuddling as Coral Morris. I mean, just look at that title. Turn it into numbers, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and see the truth. To, to my image, if you, if you direct yourself to the album cover, you'll see the dripping poison of misunderstanding. I mean, what else can we be? Explorers of the unknown, we're all that cowboy wearing that hat that only fits Rob. What other truth do we need? We are both on fire and on water. If you can't understand it, be confused. If, if you, you go, go along with Bob, Bob, you'll have nothing to lose. Because the end of the world ain't nothing compared to going without slack. Praise Bob. Uh... And speaking of the end of the world, I think it's time for an ad break. Have you considered going to The Real X Day 2023? Lady Baroness, Reverend Panic Evlan Bedlam, Esquire, a high priestess of the Church of the Subgenius, and a prophetess of the esoteric order of the Blood Trillium. And I'd like to cordially invite you all to come to the real next day. And party like it's 1998. For those not in the know, X Day is an unhinged subgenius end of the world festival run by slinging mutants, fringe lunatics, and the terminally abnormal. This fest began when a UFO cult gathered at the instructions of the world's greatest salesman, J.R. Bob Dobbs. But when Armageddon didn't come on the prophesied date, we kept drilling for the apocalypse. 25 years of playing non-stop weird music that called out our alien saviors. But, but, but we, we checked, checked and, and rechecked, rechecked our pre-scriptures. And, and due to the dubious pseudo-religious man, the, the true date, date of the space evacuation is now. Join the real X-Day weekend, June 9th through 11th, in Spencer, New York, where we will eminentize the eschaton. Praise Bob! I... And buy tickets now at xday.ticketleak.com slash 2023. But okay, if you're a subgenius already, having already gone to subgenius.com and paid for eternal salvation, salvation or, or triple, triple your money back, back, you're probably asking yourself, why June 9th through 11th instead of that other day we do it? 
Well, here's the straight deck for the true initiates of Yeti kind, so listen up. Sub genii of the world unite! Do you really want to keep waking up at 7 a.m. just because Stan didn't quite hear what Bob said from standing too close to speakers at Devo concerts? What? What if our salvation came sharply at noon on June 9th? Just think, just think. If we have to create our own sex goddesses and DIY our own spaceships, why not end our own world? Why go back to work? Let's have the fireworks early. Just spend all your money on Bob and Band merch. Revel as we party to both music and anti-music. It's all a long weekend of weirdly outrageous bands, acts, miraculous doings. Join our Exus alien summoning ritual. Why Why play it safe? If nothing else, you can try again a month later. Now, let's turn back to the pinks who don't quite know the smell of Bob's sweet slacking throp of salvation. I beseech you, come experience the end of the world in style. If you think the universe is one sick joke, offer jokes when presented with problems, would rather have a good time than a bad trip, and most importantly, are ready to donate to Bob, eternal salvation, or triple your money back. The Church of the Subgenius is just the punchline you were looking for. Repent. Quit your job. Slack off. More information at subgenius.com. Remember no O and subgenius. I can't ever remember that. I always have to bleed into the end. Anyway, whether you're a sacrificial pig or a high yeti overbeing, come to the beautiful Fool's Hill Farm. Details at foolshillfarm.com in lovely Spencer, New York, just off New York 17, the way Bob intended. See it before we uproot him with tractor beams and carry it off into space with us. Featuring Ask Dr. Hell, Big Gorgeous, Hemius, Jesse Malone, Crop Circle Worship, Big Light Pipe Bomb, Danny Mills, Fred Nets, Drew Vincent, Holy Roasters, Mike Davis and the Laughing Buddha episode, Pow Wow, Prize Winning Jim Dandy, Power Couple, Rule with the Dude, Rumble Silk Skins, Technicolor Trailer Park, This Holy Rodeo, Thomas Dowder, Trouble City All Stars, Uncle Yuke, and much, 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 much. Random encounters may include, but are not limited to, sideshow oddities, art peddlers, subgenius ranters, doctor bands, and snake oil salesmen. The following limits and restrictions may include. Tent camping during the event is $15 per night per person. A person, under these circumstances, is a teenager or older. Please only build fires in the established areas. Please take your trash with you when you leave. That includes you. Don't be an asshole. Clothing will be optional in appropriate areas. Please, no glass containers. And most importantly, bring bring cash. cash. Spend Spend money. 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 Ordained subgenius ministers with their ID card qualify for the have slack rate. All others have to pay the half slack rate. All unpaid pinks must be left outside the escape vessels or be crated when we're taken off into space upon the destruction of the planet. Please note, salvation will be offered at the door, have your money ready, and apply for the lower rate and save money. If this party does not end civilization as we know it, our one single politician in our church, the senator, will eat their hat. Because I'm not eating my hat. I like my hat. Praise Bob! And And buy buy tickets tickets now at xday.ticketlily.com slash 2023. I hope to see you today! Thank you, everyone. I have been and will be Reverend Panic Evelyn Bedlam. That's Panic with a K, Bedlam like the asylum. You can find me at my website, panicbedlam.com. That's P-A-N-I-K-B-E-D-L-A-M.com. Donate to my Patreon or send me PayPal money or whatever. And praise Bob! I just did the gesture of, like, blowing smoke away from the tip of the gun. Like, good.